Let us start with esophagus, which is the first part. And we are talking about this as a first part of the tube-like structure. The, when we talk of the complete digestive tube or elementary canal, we start with mouth and buccal cavity. But when we are talking of only the tubular part, then esophagus becomes the first or the tubular part. Again, we will draw the diagram which we have made many a times earlier just to understand the openings and the various parts that we are talking of. Pharynx leads into the tube called esophagus and this we have already drawn that this funnel like area which is called pharynx, this, there are two tubes, the anterior tube that means which is closer or front part of the neck region, this is trachea and the tube which is behind it is esophagus and it is also known as food pipe so it is called food pipe the reason it is known as food pipe because it acts as the passage of food from the buccal cavity up to the stomach so that is why it is termed as food pipe it is approximately 22 to 25 centimeters long and it runs from the base of pharynx up to the stomach. Now this opening of esophagus is known as gullet. So one opening is called gullet and the other opening is going to lead into the stomach. So if we are drawing this esophagus, then this is the tube, upper opening is gullet, this one, and here it opens into this bag-like structure that is stomach. So this is the part that is esophagus. And we said it is 22 to 25 centimeters long. Upper opening is gullet. Lower opening is guarded by a circular muscle. This is known as a sphincter. And this sphincter is called cardiac sphincter. Cardiac sphincter. Sphincter is nothing but a circular muscle. So normally these muscles, circular muscles, they remain closed. When we swallow, then these open and that's when the food actually comes into the stomach. So this tube has two openings. The upper opening is gullet and the lower opening is guarded by cardiac sphincter. It is also known as esophageal gastric opening or the sphincter can also be termed as esophageal gastric sphincter. So this can be called esophageal gastric sphincter. And this opening can also be given the same names. We have seen histology part of all the parts in general. And esophagus also has the same four layers that is serosa, muscularis, submucosa and mucosa. So it has the same three, or oh sorry, four layers which all the parts of our elementary canal have. Only difference is in this muscularis part, upper one third part of esophagus has skeletal muscles. The lower one third part has smooth muscles. And the middle one third part has both, has both, that is skeletal and smooth muscles, both. So the upper part, that is why when we swallow something up to the part when we want to swallow it or, you know, just regurgitate it, we are under control of this because here the muscles are voluntary or skeletal muscles 
and once we have swallowed it and the food comes into this part then we lose control on that food then we cannot control that the food would remain in that particular region of esophagus or should go back or should come up because here the muscles are mainly involuntary muscles so upper third one third part has skeletal muscles lower one third has only smooth muscles and the middle one third part has both mainly skeletal and smooth so this is about the muscularis layer now the mucosa layer mucosa layer has mucus glands or goblet glands mucosa mucosa has mucus glands mucus glands or cells and these cells are called goblet cells the reason is that their structure looks like the goblet the cells are columnar cells and there are these glands this looks like a goblet and that is why these are called goblet cells so this complete esophagus part it is just a tube no digestion takes place here it is called food pipe because it acts as a passage for the food which we swallow and then the food comes into the stomach part it runs from the base of pharynx through the entire neck region and it is going to come through the diaphragm this dotted line which i have drawn is the diaphragm so it is going to pierce through diaphragm and open into the bag like structure that is stomach layers are same as are in all parts of alimentary canal serosa muscularis submucosa and mucosa the changes or differences which we see is one in muscularis layer because the muscle distribution is slightly different upper third has skeletal lower one third has smooth and the middle has both plus the mucosa part is having the mucus glands or goblet cells and the inner area if we see if we take a cross section of this the lumen is not going to be like this the lumen is there are such kind of ridges and this opening is not there it is actually a tight tube it is only when peristalsis takes place that means these muscles contract and they start pushing the food downwards then only the food is going to pass through it so basically there are no openings as such lumen is not there the inner area has these kind of folds and many times these folds are known as esophageal runs esophageal runs these are nothing but ridges we have talked about rug like structure in case of palate also the hard palate has those ridges which provides grip here also there are these kind of ridges which are uh, actually make the inner part or lumen tight and only when we swallow something and when peristalsis takes place that means it is a rhythmic contraction the upper muscles contract they push the food downward then the further muscles and so on so ultimately the food gets pushed into the stomach part so now after esophagus the food comes into the stomach so the next structure which we will be discussing is